although that was a bit scary. All right, that's jumping and apparently getting some rather high voltage. Hi, and welcome back to the workbench. Today I'm looking at the QI, or Qi, as it's called, I guess. I never knew that before, but Wikipedia informs me that it's C-H-E-E -E for the pronunciation of upper Q, lower case I. I continue calling it QI just for clarity's sake. It doesn't translate well in English when you pronounce QI, Qi. It's just not that instinctive. So I don't know that unless you knew that already, you would understand that a Qi charger is the QI label. Anyway, I found some QI products over uh, on AliExpress, I think it was, a bunch of off-brand Samsung or possibly OEM Samsung parts for QI charging and some individual standalone units which include a circuit board and a little coil to do the induction. What I found was that the part from Samsung isn't actually a charger per se. What it is, it's just the induction coil and uh, the circuit breakouts for that. And the only thing it really has on it here is a resistor right there, tiny. It's a 0402 or smaller. But it's got a resistor on it and that's it for electronics. The rest of this is completely bare. I'll show you the inside of that in a second. The other one I got in is right here. This is the coil along with a circuit board for breaking it out. I'll show you a close-up of the board later. It's got some of the more interesting chips are just unmarked, so I don't know that it'll be that useful. I've got to go look them up still, which I can include later if that proves to be interesting. But there's your circuit board and the coil. That's pretty much all you get. Uh, interestingly to note, the, uh, the wires are backwards. Red's ground, black's positive. I, uh, yeah, probably just, they didn't care. Nobody was watching when they did it, whatever. So I did some interesting things with those and we'll check out what the load was like on them. We'll, we'll put a load on it and see if it handles okay or melts down or what happens. And we'll also see if I can wire up the pad over to a uh, control circuit and see if I can make that work. So. Let's get started. We'll see what we can make those do and see what they do, if they're useful in a project, etc. If you enjoy these videos, please subscribe down below and uh, give us a thumbs up. Thank you. So to test this out with, I've got a Pine Power power supply for USB and QI on top. One of the things that drove me nuts with this is the screen kept shutting off and I had no idea why until I looked at their wiki page. I purchased this before they actually had the wiki up. They had just released it. Apparently, this is a conductive pad for turning on and off the display. Unfortunately, if you put your finger on it, it does absolutely nothing. So it's not uh, exactly intuitive that it's going to turn it on and off if you didn't already know that. Although I suppose the symbol does kind of tell you it. Also, if you just happen to pass your finger relatively close to it quickly, it shuts off sometimes and uh, I, I didn't realize that was what was happening. So now that I know that it's, well, I know that it's actually functional. Not sure how accurate those are, but I'll do a different video to see if, see if I can determine how accurate the display is on this thing. I'm not sure they are from some other testing I did, but that'll, that'll have to wait for another day. Let's see. All right, so I've got the original inductive coil here with its, that I just pulled out of the bag with its backwards cables. Let's make sure that's the case on this one and that they just didn't randomly do them. Shot. Yeah, so I just looked at it off camera and the, the positive is black and the negative's red. Ah, uh, that's gonna throw me off. Hold on a second, let me fix that quick. Okay, now that we've got the positive red and the negative black, let's do some tests and see what we're getting off it for voltages. And we'll see how close this has to be to the QI pad to make a wireless connection. So we're gonna turn it on DC volts and try to get the glare off that screen. Man, that is horrible. There we go. Do need to improve the lighting in here a bit. I'm really not happy with how that works. I spend more time trying to get things to not screw up 
maybe visible on camera than I do actually recording sometimes. There we go. Positive and negative hooked up and not connected. And contact. All right, so I've got that wired correctly now. And as you can see, it's coming out at about five volts, 5.15 or thereabouts. And that needs to be very close to the QI pad in order to make contact. The voltage seems to just go down if it's if it's levered up a bit from it. Uh, let me see if I've got something I can prop in between there that's plastic and non-conductive. All right, there we go. Now I've got to be a little more careful, but there's enough meat on there that it's going to clamp on reliably. And there we go. So on a flat surface, it seems to be okay. And this is fairly thick. That's about two millimeter, if I remember right, 1.6 or two. I'm not sure what it ended up being. Actually, check that quick enough. That is two millimeter. So I made those two millimeter thick. So it goes through two millimeter of PLA just fine, which might be adequate for my purposes. Doesn't seem to be heating up too much. Although that was a bit scary. Why that's jumping and apparently getting some rather high voltage. Wow, that's jumping up to 34 volts. So there's some something's a bit funky here. That seems to be oscillating. I don't know if that's just the meter or if that's actually happening. I don't know that this one has a hold. Hold on, let me get an altogether cheaper meter on here. So, I don't know if the fluke has a min-max function. Eh, hold on, let me prop this up a little better. I don't know if the fluke has a whole min-max function on it, but this certainly does right here. So, let me get this tested. We'll make sure we get the, we still get our voltage out of it. All right, doesn't seem like anything's come too loose. We're still getting uh, 5.2 when it's sitting on there. And let's put our PLA sheet back on, toss the circuit board back up, put it on max, and let's see what we get. This also doesn't have nearly as fast a um, response time as the fluke, so we might not catch it even if there was a transient happening and throwing a higher voltage periodically. Yeah, I don't see anything happening on here. Although with the PLA in between it, that does seem to be dropping out regularly. All right, so that's the stock unit as shipped from China with the little induction coil. Now the reference on QI's design, at least according to Wikipedia, has a shield, a foil shield and whatnot. And that's what the charger uh, part from Samsung has. So this is one I took apart. There's the inside, you can see all the traces on it, all the um, probably aluminum circuitry for the coil, the flat coil on here. Yeah, it's a nice little flexible sheet. And this was what was covering it up. That's actually just a metal foil cover that was over this side, presumably to increase the signal and give it a better connection. So what I did is figure out where the two coils go uh, there are these bigger traces right here coming out here up and then over from the top up and out and they go on the pad to the top two connectors. Let's see if we can see that okay. They go to the top two of these eight connectors on the pad. So I wired that up to one of these charge circuits or the receiver circuits or you know, a little inductor and logic and whatever the heck else they have on there. Haven't looked at them too closely yet, and I don't have a reference chip, so I can't just design a quick circuit until I go and look up what they're using. But here we are, hook this one up with its Samsung QI pad, which in theory might be better suited, but we'll find out in a second. So the now covered side goes down. Let's take the cover sheet off that for now. Just to make sure it's not interfering. 
that side goes down, foil side goes up. And that actually looks a little more reliable. That's coming out at 5.18, no, no wavering around. Let's see if I can lift that up a little bit. It still likes to be pretty close to the pad. That's probably six millimeters off. Well, it does seem to be climbing back up. That circuitry doesn't seem to be getting overly hot just from sitting there with no load on it, but we'll test that out in a second. And trying to get on the propylene box with this circuit. Did I just knock something loose? I did. Yeah, that solder joint just came off. Okay, that's now resoldered better. So that's another note for this. Uh, this is very poorly soldered up as it comes out of the box, so probably something you want to fix if you're planning on actually using these things. This is the sort of thing where I'd like to design a circuit for it rather than use something out of the box, just because the quality on these tends to be a little suspect. They're, they're actually, usually what I find is that the, the cheap circuits I buy in like this are of a worse quality than what I could buy for the equivalent price if I just get some components, have some boards made over at uh, PCB Way or JLB PCB and solder them together myself. It's not even a matter of time or convenience. It's just the quality tends to be so much better if it's a even just a, a quick circuit board design or a reference design and then and then some fabricated PCBs. All right, so that seems to work, albeit a little bit reduced through the thicker polypropylene as well. So that's pretty good results. The Samsung charger pad seems to be a little better than the cheapo one that comes with the unit. So I may end up using these, plus they have a nice stick-on pad around the edge here. Where, where is that? Why are the, oh, right, because they, they stick it on the back of the uh, circuit board probably, and this part faces out toward the back of the case, and it goes through and charges off the QI pad. Although I'm a little surprised at the distance it needs to charge that with. It seems like it's a pretty weak signal and receiver, but I, there could be something I'm missing here. Let's see if the, let's see if it lights up an array of LEDs, which draws uh, 0.6, something like 0.6 amps, 600 milli, wait, not 600 milliamps, more like 120 milliamps. That's right, if I recall correctly. I think that's what I've got those set for. They get a little hot, but they should be a good test of this. So where did I put, ah, this should just be a two wire cable, which will make it useful for this application. I can just direct wire it over to the board, plug it in there on the hot and neutral, hot and ground, positive and negative, <laughs> and then see what we get. All right, there we go. That was, uh, it worked better than I thought. Okay, so I just need to check quick which side's positive and which side's negative. I assume that the red side is positive and the white's negative, but who knows? Uh, as we've already seen, that's not always the case with this stuff, so best to actually pin it out before you start wiring it up and uh, have to hope that the feedback circuitry is okay on your devices. Although that little QI charge circuit, that does have an awful lot of circuitry on there, so I'm guessing it's probably got a charge pump, some kind of IC controller for the QI portion of it, possibly some feedback control, uh, maybe even some lithium ion charging circuitry on there. I don't know. It was a little unclear on, on what all uh, it did, other than puts five volts out when you put the QI wireless charge in. So aside from that, it didn't really have much indication of what it does. One really irritating feature of this multimeter is that if you leave it on like that and the display goes off, you'd normally assume that it's powered down. It is not, it is still drawing full power off that battery. Uh, that sucker will die within a couple of hours, which is why I moved these over to nine volt rechargeable batteries instead of the nine volt uh, non-rechargeable alkaline cells. Because you'll very quickly burn through a stack of those if uh, if you're trying to use one of these cheap meters and it's just killing the batteries every time you accidentally leave it in. Okay, red's positive. 
we are good to go. All right, so now all I have to do is wire up one of those connections and we should be able to see if it can put out a reasonable amount of amount of amperage without melting or doing something else horrible. So these are all correct. This is going to be a little rough and ready, but it should get the job done. Normally I'd put some kind of uh, a cover on there, like a like a heat shrink tubing, but uh, I'm not going to leave this as a solution for any length of time. Just for safety, a little bit of electric tape to keep the contacts from immediately shorting out against each other and burning the electronics up. That's one thing it's hard to remember when you're working with this stuff, that the QI is wireless, so uh, even if it's not hooked up, it still might be conducting power if uh, you have put your QI pad somewhere near the charge circuit. All right, there we go. It's a little rough and ready, but should be functional. Hold on. Oh, wait, I turned it off, so, yep. Let's hook this up. And there we go. All right, let's get that set up on there. Turn it on. I don't think this will swamp it out. I think this didn't put out quite enough light to cause a problem. Hey, lights up, nice. Uh, hmm, this is where it'd be nice to have a thermal camera instead of my fingers. If there's some kind of transient voltage on here that are high, that would be bad. But it doesn't appear to be getting baking hot in any case. I'm not, I'm not feeling any, uh, eh, yeah, the QI pad is as sensitive to the position as, as I assumed from testing it out with a meter. That does appear to be working and that's not getting horrifically hot. So, so I think this is a success anyway. Uh, as long as I can fit this in the part I'm working on, that should that should do the trick for a quick and dirty way to get five volt through some plastic. Now, if you wanted to use this in something, you'd have to engineer up a solution. Uh, these aren't really adequate for any kind of long-term use or, I don't know, without without some safety or without knowing what on earth is on that circuit board. I, I wouldn't wire this up for more than just, you know, hobbyist use, non-permanent workbench stuff where you're you're actually there observing it. On the bright side, it's five volts. So unless those transient spikes we were seeing were real, which I might go through with an oscilloscope or some better testing gear than what I've got on the bench here and, and see if there is a uh, spike happening on there. I've actually got an HP bench meter that probably would would solve that and uh, check if there's something going on there. So those are things you'd want to check out if you were really going to use this for something more than just, you know, a fun hobbyist project of seeing how it works and getting a feel for the for the technology. I do like the Samsung pad better than the ones they came with. These actually weren't expensive. They were, I don't know, 50 cents each. So that was a worthwhile addition. I just need to figure out which pads to hook it up to. And at that point, it works just fine, as you can see. And if you have any comments, please leave them down below. If you have anything you'd like me to cover in more depth with this stuff, I can always rip it back out and take a look at it again and, and figure out how the things work in a particular way. I just didn't have anything else I need to do with it in particular, so haven't actually gone into it in any more depth yet. I'll probably do that when I'm designing the circuit, figure out what I need to put in there, possibly figure out what all is inside this board, and then go and do whatever's appropriate for that, which I, I might show you if uh, any of it turns out interesting. I'm not sure that any of the results will be much more than what I've shown here. So if that's the case, that's about it for now. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.